here. Welcome to the No Spin News for Monday, April 22nd, 2024. Stand up for your country. Want to wish all of our Jewish viewers and listeners all around the world a happy Passover. And I'm very sorry about all the anti-Israel and some anti-Semitic action here in the USA. Um, it's not acceptable. We're going to get into it a little bit tonight. Um, and it's just a shame this stuff has to happen. No real reason for it. Um, but again, I'm going to get into a very um, precise analysis coming up. But the Talking Points memo uh, this evening, we're going to begin with this uh, amazing, and I don't use that word a lot, political weekend. Um, so we had four bills voted on in the House, all fairly controversial. And I just want to run them down and tell you what happened. So the first bill was $26.38 billion from the USA to Israel for their security. Now that passed 366 to 58 in the House. Oh, you know, the House of Representatives basically saying, OK, we understand the Israeli situation. They're our strongest ally in the Middle East. So we are going to allocate um, 26 billion plus. Then comes Ukraine. Now, this is. Um, yeah, it's the vote was pretty much the same, a little bit less, but it's more controversial. So we're sending sixty one billion dollars to Ukraine, mostly weapons, but some humanitarian aid as well. And the far right does not like this. OK, the far left doesn't like the Israeli aid, but I'm going to name them names in a minute. All right. So the far right does not like that expenditure the 61 billion going to Ukraine. The vote was 311 yes, 112 no. Then there was the Indo-Pacific Security Supplement Appropriations Act, which is basically giving nations close to China some money to develop themselves. It was, it's only 8 billion, okay? But it passed 385 to 34. And the final one was the TikTok bill, and uh, sanctions on Iran, uh, freezing assets uh, of Russia, um, that was 360 to 58. So those are the four bills, all passed. All will go to the Senate now. Senate will pass them, and then Biden will sign all four. So it's a fait accompli. Now let's take a look at the Ukraine bill. All right, so the hard right in the House, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Lauren Boebert, Chip Roy, Matt Gates, Andy Biggs, on and on and on. They do not like this expenditure. They believe that the United States should not be funding the Ukrainian war. Okay. Now, they're perfectly, that's a position they have the right to take, and the voters of their district will decide. As a historian, I know this is a foolish vote against aid to Ukraine, because it's almost exactly nine, like 1938, when the far right in America didn't want to bother Hitler. OK, so understand that far right in 1938 in America want to be isolationists. So what some people don't understand is that America is the world leader. And that's not going to change no matter if you don't want it or not. Now, I well understand that spending is out of control, which is why we need a balanced budget amendment in Congress. There's no doubt about that. Thirty four trillion dollar debt. Come on. But if you allow Putin to win in Ukraine, and that means control the country, all right, you're going to pay 10 times more than $60 billion the first year. Because Putin's just going to cause trouble in all of the former Soviet republics. All of them. He'll just go in, he'll do the same thing, he'll undermine, and then it, the world will be in economic chaos. Everything is intertwined today. Our economy is good in America right now. OK, inflation's terrible. Thank you, Joe Biden. But the economy is good. People are working. You get wars everywhere. That's going to change fast and it's going to come to your house. But these hard right people don't seem to understand or they disagree with me. OK, OK, so um, that's tolerable. You can disagree with me, but I'm right. <laughs> OK, I know Putin. I know what he wants. He wants to destabilize the whole world and reimpose Russian domination in his former Soviet districts. That's what he wants. 
What? Why is he in Ukraine anyway? Hundreds of thousands of Russians dead? Come on. There's no reason to be there. No benefit to you, you war criminal. All right. So um, that's that. I just have a disagreement with these people. I don't tie it into border security. You're never going to get border security under Joe Biden. No matter what they pass, no matter what executive order, it'll never happen. He's got to go, Biden, in order for there to be border security and immigration law enforced. He's not going to do it. All right, Israel. So it's the same crew, the hard right, Biggs, Boebert, Gates, Taylor Green, Roy, same crew. But they're joined by the squad, the far left nuts. Okay, Casio Tortez, Omar, Tlaib, Presley, Bowman, Bush, the same. They just don't like Israel. Okay, they don't like America, and they attach America to Israel and vice versa. So they, they don't want any money going over there. I'm going to use one sound bite. I, I debated on doing this, but I'm going to do it. This is uh, Congresswoman Green. Go. Last Monday was tax day, April 15th. And Washington betrayed the American people by sending $93 billion to support foreign wars while doing nothing, absolutely nothing, to secure our border. That is a complete betrayal. I, you know, I, I don't know what to say. OK, I want border security. You want border security. Not going to happen under Biden. The two are not intertwined. You're not going to blackmail Biden over Ukraine. He's not going to enforce the border, no matter what you do. And again, to alleviate massive problems in the world down the road, you've got to blunt Putin here. Now they say, well, what's the end game? There is no end game. All right. It's a matter of if Trump is reelected in November, Trump will get Putin to the table. They will make some kind of an agreement, which will probably be Putin keeps some Donbass in some areas. But. If Biden wins, Putin will just keep going. That, that's pretty much where it is. Okay, that's the memo. Joe Biden, Earth Day, goes to Virginia to talk about Earth Day. All right, okay. Um, here's an interesting story. So Michael Douglas, uh, Kirk Douglas' son, I know, or I knew Kirk Douglas, I corresponded with him, and I know Michael Douglas, and, and I like them. I like them. Uh, they're very respectful and intelligent and all that. But they're fervent liberals, both of them, the late Kurt and Michael Douglas. They understand to survive in Hollywood. You have to be a fervent liberal. You really can't survive in that industry, the entertainment industry, if you're not. So Douglas goes on CNN and uh, says this. Go. So you and Biden are about the same age. What do you do? You think, you know, are you one of those people who wished he had uh, bowed out, let uh, let the field choose somebody else? How do you how do you think about that? Well, I think I think that I walk a little similar to him, um, and the people that I've talked to and everybody that I I have. Uh, Say he's, he's as sharp as a tack. He, he's fine. We all have an issue with memories. Uh, as we get older, we forget names, uh, something. He's overcome a stutter uh, in his life. Sharp as a tack. OK, number one, that's hearsay. He doesn't know Biden. Number two, apparently he's not watching the news. Uh, Michael Douglas isn't. But really, this is what he wants to believe. We go back to people believe what they want to believe. All right. And the, the people who are supporting Biden, they want to believe that he's right on top of everything. He's got no cognitive problems. It's fairyland. I mean, we got it. If you have eyes and you see the president of the United States on the road, you know, I wrote a column um, called Zone of Comfort. And I said uh, one of the sentences in a column was Biden needs a cheat sheet just to wish you a nice day. <laughs> the man cannot articulate Anything. He's sharp as a tack. What kind of tack is that, Michael? But I don't hold it against him. I'm not mad at him. People believe what they want to believe. That's it. I, go, I can go back to Ukraine. The hard right is never going to believe that allowing Putin to take over that country will lead to uh, 
chaos in the world. They won't believe it no matter what you do, no matter how many historical lessons you put up there. Everything is expensive these days, you know that. The government is printing trillions of dollars in consumer prices higher than ever. If the government continues its printing and spending, the dollar could continue its free fall and lose its coveted role as the world reserve currency. Let's hope that doesn't happen. But there are a few things you can do right now. American Hartford Gold can show you how to protect your money, your retirement, your hard-earned savings against inflation by helping you diversify a portion of your portfolio into physical gold and silver. Start with a short phone call, and they can have physical gold and silver delivered right to your door or put inside your 401k or IRA. So please call or text them right now. Tell them Bill O'Reilly sent you. Call 877-444-GOLD, 877-444-GOLD, or text GOLD to 65532. Again, that's 877-444-GOLD, or text GOLD to 65532. Okay, mail, 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 mail. Virginia Luce, Andover, New Hampshire. Mr. O'Reilly, I love uh, BillOReilly.com. Listen to you explain everything, so... I can understand it. You're interesting and very succinct. Thank you. I appreciate the compliment, Virginia. My question, where does all the money come from that we give to other countries? It comes from Congress, which a lots of budget. And then the actual money comes from the Treasury Department. They send the checks. Okay. In the case of Ukraine and Israel somewhat, we'll send actual weapons. Okay. But once our money gets into a foreign country, we don't have audit capabilities. Always remember that. Peggy Davis, Philadelphia. The main concern of voters and Republicans in Congress around giving money to Ukraine is that they are demanding there be accountability. There's not accountability anywhere. This foreign aid. What are we going to do? Set up uh, firms to look at how they're handling uh, the aid? And not only for USA, but, you know, NATO and all of these countries, parnate in there, blunt Putin. Terrence, as they say, the witches in Salem got a fairer trial than the Trump in New York. It is a witch trial. It is a witch hunt. He's right. Vicki Jordan O'Fallon, Missouri, longtime fan, respecter of yours, Bill. I am a constitutional conservative with a biblical worldview. Where do I fit in? You got plenty of company on that one, Vicky. Plenty of company. Uh, most conservative traditional Americans are straight down the line constitutionalists and the religious-based uh, Bible people. Very common in the USA. You're not a minority. Mary Beth Lowe, Elgin, Illinois. I'm a premium member. Your final thought on April 18th made me think that I, too, was put on earth for a reason. I would not want to change places with anyone. I believe I was put here to be a mom to my two sons. My older 25-year-old is nonverbal and autistic. He is my blessing. Nobody can take care of him the way I do. I thank God for giving me my two boys. You know, your letter almost made me cry, Mary Beth. That's how noble a person you are. Kenneth, Bill, I respectfully disagree. Compassion in business can come back to bite you. That is my experience. Okay, you can get hosed if you're compassionate. Doesn't mean you shouldn't be, does it? Okay, go to BillOReilly.com. Mom's Day is coming up. We got the mugs. She'll love. And by the way, if you have the Not Woke mug and you take a picture of it, send it to me. I will use it if you want. We'll do a little montage of people holding up their not woke mugs. Want to send a message? Not woke, not woke. Um, word of the day, no, Delocity. D-O-L-O-S-I-T-Y. Good word. Delocity. We don't want that. Bill at BillOReilly.com. Bill at BillOReilly.com. Name in town if you wish to opine. Back with a final thought in a moment. As you know, Mike Lindell is a passion to help you get the best sleep of your life. His famous Giza Dream Sheets are the best sheets you will ever sleep on. For a limited time, get a queen-size set for $59.98.
king size just $69.98. These are the lowest prices in my pillow's history. Mike and my pillow employees continue to be canceled by some big box stores and attacked by the media. They appreciate your great support during these times and want to thank you by giving you free shipping on your entire order today. So please go to MyPillow.com or call 800-869-0298. Use promo code Bill. You get the famous Giza Dream Sheets at the lowest prices, so call 800-869-0298. Go to MyPillow.com, promo code Bill, to get free shipping today. As another critical election nears, America is gripped by anxiety. Recent studies show that 56% are feeling dread about the upcoming presidential vote in November. That's why I stand with AMAC. It's more than a senior discount organization. AMAC fights for common sense and a return to traditional American values. Visit amac.us slash O'Reilly to grab an exclusive election year special, a four-year AMAC membership for just $30. Members get access to money-saving benefits, the AMAC magazine, free Social Security and Medicare advice, a trusted voice in Washington, and a community of like-minded patriots. Take advantage of this election year special. Four years for just $30. Be a part of the solution. By joining AMAC, you strengthen a movement dedicated to preserving our cherished principles. Please join now at amac.us slash O'Reilly. That's amac.us slash O'Reilly. All right, here is our final thought of the day. Saturday, I went to the Nick game. They beat the 76ers. Good game. And I felt sorry for Joel Embiid, who's hurt. Guy is a phenomenal player. If he can't play, and I don't think he can at full strength, the Knicks will win that series. Anyway, I was sitting there behind uh, a guy, and I didn't even know it was him, named Alexander Soros, the son of George Soros. There it is. Okay? And he's looking not at the game. He's looking at his machine. Now, I'm glad I didn't know that was Alexander Soros because I might have said something to him, particularly because the NYPD honor guard was there to sing the national anthem. And Soros and his father undermined police all over the country. I didn't know it was him. I'm kind of glad... I think I might have gotten a technical foul if I had. That happened on Saturday night. Thank you for watching and listening to The No Spin News. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for watching The No Spin News. To watch the full episode anytime on BillOReilly.com, please sign up to become a premium or concierge member. Visit BillOReilly.com to sign up and start watching today.